Morning folks, Richard from Inclusive Driving here. We've had a, a consultation paper published. This is to do with the highway code. So a few weeks ago, we talked about this guy, um, what it's all about, who it's for. Well, there's a proposed change, and this is being published on the government website. And what we've got is a bit of a change in hierarchy of road users. So under the current system, everybody's got equal priority and motorists have got to look after cyclists cyclists have got to look after motorists cyclists have got to look after pedestrians everybody's an equal the proposal is that this is going to be changed so that those who can cause the most damage have the greatest responsibility and the greatest duty of care so Hierarchy, we've got different levels of road user then. And at the very top, we've got pedestrians. Pedestrians have the ultimate priority. Beneath them, we've got maybe cyclists and horse riders. Are cyclists and horse riders equal? Or do cyclists have more duty of care towards horse riders? Or do horse riders have more duty of care towards cyclists? It's not clear. It's not that important. Cyclists and horse riders are below pedestrians, but they are above motor vehicles. So here's the crux of it. If you're driving a car, under the new proposed rules, you have an absolute duty of care to protect cyclists, pedestrians, and horse riders. There are some new rules called H rules, H, I assume, is standing for hierarchy. And I'm just going to have a quick glance at these and read them to you. So here's a quote from the consultation paper. The aim of the highway code is to promote safety on the road whilst also supporting a healthy, sustainable and efficient transport system. That to me seems like it is promoting walking and cycling. The hierarchy of road users. The hierarchy is a concept which places those road users at most risk in the event of a collision at the top of the hierarchy. The road users most likely to be injured in the event of a collision are pedestrians, in particular children, older adults and disabled people, followed by cyclists, horse riders and motorcyclists. Here's the key point as well. The hierarchy does not remove the need for everyone to behave responsibly. The following H rules clarify this concept, and this is rule H1. It's important that all road users are aware of the highway code and are considerate to other road users and understand their responsibility for the safety of all others. Everyone suffers when road collisions occur, whether they are physically injured or not, but those in charge of vehicles that can cause the greatest harm in the event of a collision bear the greatest responsibility to take care and reduce the danger they pose to others. The principle applies most strongly to drivers of large goods and passenger vehicles, followed by vans, minibuses, cars, taxis and motorcyclists. Now here's my first point. On large goods vehicles, we see signs at the back saying, warning cyclists, don't get in the blind spot. Now, obviously that's a good idea. It's never a good idea to be in somebody's blind spot. But I've always felt that having that sign on the outside of the vehicle, when there isn't an equivalent sign inside the vehicle, warning the driver of the heavy goods vehicle to look out for cyclists in the blind spot, I've always thought that's been a bit of an imbalance of responsibility. So I'm quite pleased that this balance or imbalance is being addressed. Cyclists, horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles likewise have a, have a responsibility to reduce danger to pedestrians. Always remember that the people you encounter may have impaired sight, impaired hearing or impaired mobility and may not be able to see or hear you. None of this detracts from the responsibility of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders, to have a regard for their own and others' road safety. Rule H2. Now this one, it's already in the highway code, but the wording has been changed. There's just a few extra words in there 
just to emphasize more the duty of care on car drivers here. At a junction, you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which you are turning. Previously, the highway code said if a pedestrian is already crossing the road, which suggests they're in the road, not the pavement. But now this is saying if it looks like they are wanting to cross the road. Now this is the same as most European countries. Any time a car turns into a new road, they automatically give way to pedestrians who are crossing the road. And I'm glad to see that we're now following suit in the UK. You should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross at a zebra crossing and pedestrians and cyclists waiting to cross a parallel crossing. It doesn't define parallel crossing. And honestly, I haven't looked it up, but I think it is where maybe a cycle path runs alongside or parallel with the road. And if a driver is wanting to turn left into a side road and has to cross that parallel cycle path, there's now more of a duty of care upon that car driver to look out for cyclists. Pedestrians have priority when on a zebra crossing, on a parallel crossing or at light controlled crossings when they have a green signal. Let's come back to the zebra crossing thing. At the moment in the highway code, it's if a pedestrian has stepped onto the crossing, we have to give way. Note how the subtle wording is now, if they are waiting to cross, we have to give way. And here's an example of cyclists being below pedestrians in the hierarchy. Cyclists should give way to pedestrians on shared use cycle tracks. Only pedestrians may use the pavement. Now this conflicts a little bit with guidance that was issued to police forces, whereby a cyclist on a footpath who is cycling responsibly and, safety and safely should not be prosecuted. This is now saying that cyclists, um, excuse me, this is now saying that only pedestrians may use the footpath. So does that change the guidance about cyclists not being on the footpath, even if they're cycling carefully and responsibly? Uh, this includes people using wheelchairs, mobility scooters. Pedestrians may use any part of the road and use cycle tracks as well as the pavement, unless there are signs prohibiting pedestrians. And then rule H3, rules for drivers and motorcyclists, you should not cut across cyclists going ahead when turning into or out of a junction or changing direction of lane, just as you would not turn across the path of another motor vehicle. This applies whether cyclists are using a cycle lane, a cycle track or riding ahead on the road and you should give way to them. Do not turn at a junction if, it would, if to do so would cause the cyclist going straight ahead to stop or swerve just as you would do with a motor vehicle. You should stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. This includes when cyclists are approaching, passing or moving off from a junction, moving past or waiting alongside stationary or slow moving traffic, or traveling around a roundabout. Now there are specific rules in there for pedestrians. I'll put these in a, a screenshot up there. Rules about animals, rules about cyclists and here we go rules for drivers and motorcyclists um, and this is just telling you about the proposed changes the rules for drivers and motorcyclists chapter of the highway code will be updated to make certain that audible warning systems and camera and audio warning systems are used properly and correctly when driving so here we have some more detail so whereas previously we've discussed maybe the proposed changes, now here we've got actually some of the wording that is proposed for the new highway code. Um, and it gives things about being more specific about how much distance to leave when you're overtaking a cyclist. The current recommendation is 1.5 meters, that's a blanket rule. But now it goes on to say that it should be 1.5 meters if you're traveling up to 30 miles an hour, but if you're traveling over 30 miles an hour, you should be leaving two meters. You should wait behind the motorcyclist, cyclist or horse rider, and do not overtake if it is unsafe or not possible to meet these clearances.
a little bit about roundabouts. You should give priority to cyclists on the roundabout. They will be traveling more slowly than motorized traffic. Give them plenty of room and do not attempt to overtake them within their lane. Allow them to move across your path as they travel around the roundabout. And here we have a section on road users requiring extra care. Again, I'll put a screenshot up here. Including the hierarchy concept, any interaction between road users, those who cause the greatest harm, have the greatest responsibility to reduce the danger or threat they pose to others. When approaching a zebra and parallel crossing, you must give way to pedestrians on the crossing. Approaching pedestrians who have started to cross the road ahead of you, they have priority. So this isn't necessarily talking about turning into a side road. This is talking about driving along the road. And if there are pedestrians ahead of you who have started to cross the road, we have to slow down and wait for them. I think this is a good thing. On narrow sections of road at road junctions and in slower moving traffic, cyclists may sometimes ride in the center of the lane. This is what cyclists call primary position. And it's their version of what we call defensive driving in a car. They may move out to the center of the road to stop motorists from overtaking unsafely. Now the highway code is saying that they can do that. So again, I like to see this. It's reinforcing that cyclists are the vulnerable road users here. And we as motorists have to look after them. So what's the take home point from this message? For me, it's something that I've always had as my philosophy of road use. And it's a little bit of a militant attitude, perhaps. But I have always said, pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders have a right to be on the road. Motorists do not have a right to be on the road. We only have a license. And to gain that license, we have to prove that we can safely integrate with those more vulnerable road users, not the other way around. It's not for the cyclists and other vulnerable road users to prove that they can integrate with us. It's for us to prove that we can integrate with pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders. So I'm sorry this discussion turned into a little bit of a rant. It's something I feel very passionate about as a motorist and as a cyclist who's been injured in the past, being knocked off a push bike. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee now. So I hope that's been interesting. Have a look at the proposed consultations. There's a PDF version available where the before and after wording has been highlighted to make it easy to find. Let me know what you think. Put some comments down there and I'll respond to them as I normally do. Have a good day.